Chris Reid. I'm the uh, chair of this year's programme committee at GP18. So I've got the pleasure and the honour of uh, having a quick chat with uh, Ben, one of our keynote speakers. Uh, ben, how are you finding, uh, the, how has the conference been for you so far? So, uh, I, I go to a number of conferences, mm. but uh, coming from the, the Ministry of Defence and the Army, they mm. tend to be, as you would expect, defence and security conferences. So, so this is very different, both mm. in subject matter, but also uh, style. And, it, and, and, and what I've taken away is um, the, the maturity of the debate, the way that uh, issues are confronted, and, um, and, and the honesty. And I, I think it's been a fantastic occasion. So we brought you here, even though you're not a doctor, uh, because of your leadership role in the defence and the intelligence world. And, and I think people are saying they've learned a lot from you, which is great. Uh, are, will you take, are, are you learning stuff here that you're going to take back to your world, as it were? Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, oh uh, undoubtedly. I mean, a number of things um, spring to mind. Uh, spring to mind. I mean, certainly things like uh, the importance of communication yeah. um, and, and understanding the way communication takes place in a, in, in a surgery, in a practice, is, is a really compelling mm. uh, image uh, mm. that, um, that has direct relevance to, to the world of intelligence and the way that we, uh, we brief uh, our senior commanders as we're giving them uh, the information that they need to make their decisions. So, so there's lots of parallels and lots of things that have made me think fundamentally about the way that, uh, that we work in my own industry. So, and you mentioned uh, sort of humour as being an important part of uh, leadership. So, you know, it, on, on that theme, if I could ask you, who would you invite to your, uh, you know, your ultimate dinner party? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I, um, so I think uh, Mitchell and Webb, so if I can invite two of them, so two great comics and um, really intelligent, insightful, but just funny, funny comedy. Um, but I know that I would also have to invite um, someone like um, John Frankham, uh, because um, uh, the dinner party presumably has my wife there and I need to have someone who's massively interested in horses otherwise you know it'll be not a good dinner party right right and and, and okay so in a, if we picked specifically world leaders you know who where would you sit them and, and who would you invite current world leaders correct yeah um, I'm not sure I would uh, particularly want to be at that dinner party at the moment it sounds like quite a heavy dinner party okay um, but um, it, I mean, I would question what, uh, to answer your question seriously, I, I, I think I'd want to know what we were trying to achieve from that dinner party. Well, that's a very mature answer, isn't is it? Is it, yeah, is yeah. it bringing, um, uh, bringing perhaps adversaries uh, together? Um, and therefore, how do you achieve that? And how do you achieve that um, by having neutral people there mm. at the same department, uh, same party? Um, or is it something about you know, forging closer alliances with people who are already friends? So I think I'd want to know what the, the actual aim of the dinner party is before choosing world leaders. Okay. In, in terms of your, I mean, without giving away specific personal medical experiences, have you got any sort of interesting memories of uh, doctors or medical officers from your uh, military days? And you're not allowed to mention me on that one. <laughs> um, for, uh, just from my military days? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, um, yeah. So I uh, remember a number. Um, uh, our medical officer at Sandhurst was a, a, a lovely lady uh, called Sally Hayes, who uh, eventually married one of the fellow instructors at Sandhurst called uh, Sally Dangerfield. Um, and um, she was a great medical officer for Sandhurst. And of course, there are a lot of young officer cadets going through training there. There's a lot of injuries taking place. Um, and Sally, to my mind, uh, managed to, um, to make sure that she was uh, returning people to training as quickly as possible, uh, making sure that perhaps some of the shirkers weren't able to pull the wool over people's eyes, which could be a problem sometimes mm. in these training institutes, but most of all had a, had a wonderful manner about making sure that cadets were um, you know, felt that they were protected, felt that they were you know, in a safe medical environment, and when they had issues, you know, she was very much there to support them. So she was a... She was a um, uh, she, I think she was a very talented medical officer, and um, I know that you and I have served together, so I'm deliberately not mentioning you. <laughs> what about um, in sport, obviously New Zealand being obviously the greatest nation in the world in the most important sports, um, how does that, you know, do you feel a bit uncomfortable coming to the world where the All Blacks reign supreme? Um, no, no, I'm... I'm, uh, I, I'm Why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> Because I think being uh, a, 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 an English rugby fan, one gets used to uh, <laughs> moments of triumphs, but sometimes moments of disappointment. So, um, so I yeah. think you know you get a bit of a thick skin on these. 
Okay, are you allowed to tell us where you see your career going? I mean, is there more on the agenda for you in, in your career? Um, where would you, you know, I, aspirations? Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't have a crystal ball in front of me. Um, yeah. For the moment, I'm uh, enjoying the, the job that I've got. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's got everything that uh, you'd want, a good team, a challenging mission, and, uh, and so forth. Um, I, I, you know, I can't see any reason why now I would wish to leave uh, the army. Um, I certainly am enjoying the work, and um, uh, I, I think that I've still got a few more steps before I transition into Civvy Street. In fact, so as final question, you know, in, in your, you've, you've probably come into contact with some quite um, amazing people. Um, and uh, I'm not necessarily saying talking you know, about yourself. Again. Yeah, of course, yes. Uh, so excluding me. Um, uh, and you can't talk about yourself either. Who, who is there? Someone out there that always sticks in your memory as a, a point where you just it, it really you remember or it transforms some thought. Wow, one individual. Mm. Um, I'm really trying to struggle because mm. I think there's. Uh, I'm really struggling because I think that there's, um, and, and perhaps, you know, perhaps that's probably the answer in itself that. Mm. Um, I think the army is full of um, ordinary people, including leaders, who are doing extraordinary things. Um, but actually, they all have different strengths and skills. And I don't think any of them have necessarily stood out as, as a you know, exceptional superhero compared to the rest. Um, there are admirable qualities about um, the, um, uh, the company 2IC in my first company, who's still serving, who uh, was a real uh, mentor for me in my first year in the army. Um, there are admirable qualities about um, some of the uh, the uh, the individuals I worked for in my first staff job in the Ministry of Defence. There are admirable qualities about um, the first brigade commander I had. They, you know, all of those had sort of things that resonated, but but it always felt that they were um, that they were uh, um, good people and just doing extraordinary things. So last uh, yeah. So any any what you're gonna when you get back to you know that uh, English soil as it were. What 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 memory will stick in your mind from your few days here in New Zealand? I think um, uh, I think the sense of purpose from the conference. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, the themes, particularly of uh, equity, um, have 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 been you know, very very clear from all of the speakers, and um, uh, you know the shared sense of uh, the. Um, compelling requirement to, 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 to make a difference and to change that imbalance um, and how there was a collective agreement on that sort of need for change and a, and a real sort of energy to, to, to try and uh, energy and positivity to try and uh, make a difference. Well Ben thank you very much. Thank you very much as well. You're welcome. <laughs>